So we're live on Facebook, I think. Would you like to just check Alexis from your end? And I will also, when you've checked that we're live on Facebook, we'll go live on Instagram as well. Fingers crossed. Okay. I've never gone live on both at the same time. Well, you know, we might as well try it. I know, I know. <laughs> Next it'll be YouTube. Yeah, I think I'm on. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah. I'm going to click on live on Instagram now. Okay. Okay, so I need to inv invite you on Instagram. So you need to be viewing it on your phone. And as soon as I see you, I can invite you on my yeah, phone. Yeah, hang on. Hello, Lou has joined us on Instagram and we've got six viewers on Facebook. Hello, we're just setting up, just sorting out the technology. It's taken us um, <sighs> a long time to sort out the technology on this. Right, Fortis Therapy, you've joined. Right, Alexis, if you can somehow, oh, actually, hang on, I saw, I saw the link. Okay, let's see if I've just accepted you on Instagram Live Alexis so let's see if that works so we're trying to go live on Facebook and there she is there she is ah look cool so we're going to try and be going live on Facebook and on Instagram um, we are going to concentrate on comments on the Facebook page otherwise it will be too difficult to manage so um, but I will try and keep my eye on Instagram, but at the m moment I'm going to concentrate on Facebook, otherwise it might get a bit too much. So, you're just adjusting your screen so we can yeah, see. Yeah, just so you can see. Oh, that's bit, fine, isn't it? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you're, you're, can you tilt it any more, or, are you, or would it fall over? Uh, let me just adjust it. Hold on. Okay. We better not play around too much, or we'll end up, we'll end up dropping it. Don't worry too much, Alexis, it's fine. Sure. Yeah. We might, I might end up getting a bit of feedback with you talking through my phone. So if I do, I might have to end the Instagram broadcast, but let's see how we get on. Anyway, so first of all, I wanted to wel welcome everybody for joining us tonight and a special welcome to Alexis of Fortis Therapy because I know she is really, really, really busy right now. Um, I met Alexis last year in May um, yeah. at the Small Awards. Um, so some of you will know that um, our business, Stamptastic, won the Best Digital Award. Although you, the, the struggling I've been having, struggle I've been having <laughs> technology this week, you wouldn't think that. And um, Alexis won. You won. Which was the first category you won? You won the well-being uh, one. Was we it? won the best service. Best service, and also you won. Uh, we won overall best business. Best best small business in the UK. So yeah. that's how um, we've got to know each other. And um, over the last couple of weeks, um, I've been very aware that we have obviously loads and loads of followers, especially parents on our social media. And um, really, I just wanted to um, do a broadcast with Alexis, um, who, well, why don't you tell people what, what you actually do? Because you're a psychotherapist, aren't you? But I don't actually really understand what a psychotherapist is. Okay, so, um, yeah, so I'm, a, I'm basically a therapist who uh, works with all ages and Fortis specialises in kind of all ages and all sectors. Uh, so that means that we work with people on a one-to-one, -one, um, but we also work with couples and families as well and we work in organizations too so it's a, a big variety of different types of therapies so that might be talking therapies for people who that works for uh, which is things like uh, cbt you might have heard of cognitive behavioral therapy um there's also play therapy drama therapy art therapy so there's all different types of therapies so people can find the one that works for them and the best way of expressing how they feel um, people come and see us for a variety of different reasons. It could be to do with having mental health difficulties, uh, depression, anxiety, or it could be trauma related. Um, it could be feeling very angry and agitated, all, all sorts of things. Um, every referral that we receive is different and people need something slightly different to help them. And so we were talking earlier about, you are gonna share some tips for um 
helping people cope at the moment for themselves and for their children. But you, we would just discuss that you would first of all going to explain a bit about why it is we need help. Obviously, we know what why what's going on, but mm. why is that thing making us, us me? most people <laughs> me really, too <laughs> why is it making us all feel the way we feel yeah because it's our ultimate fear really um the the last few weeks the virus has been what everyone's been kind of talking about but actually how we feel about it has created all sorts of fear so if you look at it as a pandemic really the pandemic is fear as opposed to the virus although that it's changing as time goes on so our response is to fear are four responses that's fight flight freeze and flop okay so we either want to fight the situation we want to run away from it we freeze because we just that's kind of really um a primal response where if we don't move we're not going to be seen uh, and the flop response is literally where your body just kind of cuts out mm. okay. so all the things that we've seen, you know, where people have been buying an awful lot of toilet rolls or, you know, uh, there's been, we've seen horrible images of people fighting in shops and all that kind of thing. It's because people are frightened. Right. So panic um, buying is fear. Yeah. And trying to make sure you've got enough food. And, you know, we, we've all been guilty of walking into a shop and thinking, I'll just buy an extra packet of that or an extra packet of this because, you know, I just might need it. We've got people buying new freezers and fridges and you know all sorts of things yeah. because the ultimate fear is i think this what it's helped us to kind of see is actually we're quite vulnerable as people we need food we need supplies we need interaction with other people um some of the things that we're being told to do so keep a distance um you know stay away from people we love and care about because we might be represent a risk uh, when we're worried and frightened generally speaking we want to go and give somebody a hug yeah we want to get hold of them and make sure they're okay we want to we want to see them um, and be able to see how they are yeah it's really hard when you can't do that yeah it's um, the opposite of we want to do the opposite of what we're being told we can't do yes absolutely horrible, so yeah. that, so then what do we do because how else are we going to manage that um you know we've got people dropping food parcels off to elderly you know relatives or care you know caring for people um and it's so hard to keep that distance it makes you i think it just makes us very sad mm, um yeah so i think all of those things you know what we're having to deal with the the kind of acceptance of what's happening which is starting to happen maybe a little bit more than it was but also how we're being advised to manage it goes against our natural responses so so that creates a real sense of um lack of i suppose it's a bit like it it de-skills us what, what so what do i do and how can i do this differently it's interesting what you said about the, the four things, because I think the about three weeks ago, I went into panic mode. So all my normal, I have a subscribe and save thing with Amazon. So all the things that were going to be arriving later on in this month, I put them earlier. So instead of getting them later, I put them earlier. And then and then last week, I think it was last week, it's all blurring into one now. Might have not. <laughs> no, last week was the first week. The week before last, I when we hadn't been told to stay inside, but I did. I was scared and I stayed inside. And and that would that be the what was what was that one? The the shutting down one or yeah, the kind of I suppose it's more of a you know it's it's about wanting to be in your safe place, isn't it? Yeah. Um, because and I I think I, I can really relate to that. A couple of weeks ago, on the I'd had um, a really bad chest infection, so every time I was out anywhere, people were. <laughs> you know she's coughing yeah. and um i'd seen a gp i knew what it was i get them quite regularly um and by the uh, by the weekend i felt so tired and on the sunday i just thought i don't actually want to deal with this oh, if i could just stay so home and shut the doors and i'd be quite happy with that um so i think we've all gone through we the problem is we're all going through these different stages at different times yeah. so you could be in a family and you know your house might be full of people um and you're all at different points uh, it's the same thing when you work in a team everybody is at a different point each day so those responses um i know yesterday i found yes 
they really hard. My parents have been married 50 years yesterday. Oh, congratulations um, and, to them from us. Yeah, and they've done an amazing, you know, it's amazing, but all the things we planned we couldn't do. So we had to kind of improvise. And, you know, I think we used house party. I'm using all this new technology, house party last night, um, where we, the whole family were on it. We played oh, games. Yeah. And it was great. And it really lifted me up because I could see everybody, um, yeah. you know. So I think it's just very strange times. And it's natural, really natural to find it hard. So, um, okay, so let's talk a bit about um, kids. You were saying that, you know, we can all be in the house together and we can all be feeling things at different times. What, um, we'll, talk, we'll talk about different ages, but what if you have young kids? Have you got any special, or maybe your tips apply to parents of children of all ages? I don't know. Um, well, I've kind of got a whole list of different ideas, depending on what people want to hear, really. Um, okay, so yeah, but if I anybody think... has any questions on Instagram or Facebook, please pop them um, in the comments, and um, we'll either try and get to them in the broadcast or at the end, so please do ask. But... Um, yeah, why don't you just fire away with a few and then we'll see if anybody's brave enough to ask a, yeah, ask a question. Yeah, that's fine. Um, part of it, I think, part of the pressures we're seeing anyway, we do a lot of work in schools, so we're seeing an awful lot of children, we're contacting a lot of parents and we're helping everybody really. Um, there's a lot of pressure about homeschooling. You know, we've got to get mm. this homeschooling done. Um, and we were talking today, we had a, a peer support meeting with all my therapists and we were talking about the pressure that's kind of put another layer of pressure on. So not yeah. only are we at home being a parent and maybe if we're working at home as well, we're a professional or we have a job that we're doing and then we're now teaching <laughs> as well. Um, and, and we're not, it, and we're not it, teachers. No, exactly. And actually, children don't want to listen to us. Our children no. <laughs> are sick of that. <laughs> Uh, you know, it, so again, it creates tensions. Um, so if you've got really quite young children and uh, you're trying to structure their day, and, and I'm all about routine, I think it helps mental health massively. You know, it, it gives us a purpose and we know what's expected of our day. Mm. But at the same, by the same token, there are different ways of learning. And there are more interactive ways and more fun ways than working through a worksheet or a workbook. And, you know, just to take a pressure off, really, you know, we've got we've got quite a long, we don't know how long this is going to go on for. So I think if you've got children at home and they are, um, you know, kind of trying to get through some work, just in manageable chunks, almost like a bit of a timetable, but don't worry about it too much. If you haven't started yet, it, it's no big deal. Um, everyone's got a lot of change to get their head around. So it's being realistic about that, I think would be my first one. And what if you're, I mean, because I think most people are on their Easter holidays now, but they may well have been set stuff for, to do over the Easter holidays. And perhaps if we go, we go, we don't go back to school and we get more after Easter. What if your child just refuses to do the work? I think then that's about being creative. You know, um, you can you can use counting games. You can uh, do do it using reading and books and playing games. And you know, it doesn't have to be um, a straightforward it, it, it kind of sitting down at a table and doing some work. You know, children aren't really designed to do that. And in a classroom mentality, um, they are conditioned to do it. But at home, it's different. Mm -hmm. So you know, instead of using um, bribery which I know we've all used as a parent to try and get try and get them to play ball yeah. <laughs> um you know try and use positive reinforcement you, you know you, how well they've done over something it doesn't matter how small it is um if you would like them to do something you know you this is a reward for doing this as opposed to stop doing that and I'll give you a reward it's it's how you approach these conversations that's so um, hard though isn't it I mean really hard I it went, is I, I mean my kids are 17 and 14 now and I went to a parenting course when that when they were about five and three and the whole thing was based about positive positivity and rewarding good behavior but it is really hard and I guess the thing is is that if your kid is not doing what you want them to do and you haven't got the energy or the patience to try and work the way you're suggesting would it be wrong to go and stick a Disney movie on? No I think you've got to be realistic I've got three children um, and there's times when I've been kind of you know if I can find something that can sit and watch together then that's great um, you have to give yourself a break as a parent especially at the moment um, it's it's it, we're at home so it, it it should be okay but actually you know some of this is quite relentless 
Mm. Um, and it's it can be quite repetitive and it's quite boring <laughs> at times. Um, you know, and actually you need some time out. And if there's two parents in the house, then great. You know, tag team it, give each other a bit of a break. Yeah. Um, if there if there isn't, um, then you know, using putting a Disney movie on or putting something on that means that they're distracted for for half an hour and it gives you a chance to go and reset yourself and give yourself a minute, then just I'm lost up, you know, on all the, up for that. Just lost you on oh hang on, water's therapy, I'm gonna add you again. Um that's quite interesting what you're saying about um tag teaming and stuff. So if you if both parents you're in a household where there are two adults um mm. and you both need to work from home how do you approach <laughs> trying to work because mm. we were, like we were talking about productivity earlier suddenly you you've got less hours in the day really to do parenting teaching and working so how, how would you approach speaking to a partner for example about without passive aggressiveness which says i'm not <laughs> at the moment in our house i have teens so i don't have to look after my kids as much but I think there are other things that I need to talk to. we can talk about teens in a bit but um, so I don't need to provide for them so much in the physical sense um, but I imagine if you have younger children and you're both trying to work from home or you're a parent on your own and you're trying to work from home how would you suggest approaching that with your other half to uh, resolve that amicably <laughs> without having a massive row yeah basically um, <laughs> um, Part of this is is about communication. Mm. The difficulty we have at the moment is it, that we're in close confines with each other and we're not getting much space. So we're not really designed in relationships to do that. We go off and we do our thing, we come back, we have new things to speak about and talk about. Yeah. Um, but it is about being realistic that, you know, if two of you are working, and that's the case in my house, and my children are a bit older, my youngest is, um, is 11, um, and but you but you have to figure out a timetable of how you're going to do this because you're absolutely right in terms of productivity we all know when we get tired and we're stressed our productivity levels go down um we are less effective whereas if you actually know you've got a three-hour block here to do some work and then you're going to look after the children for a period of time and then you've got another three-hour block actually you're going to probably be far more focused because you, you've got to get on and you've got to get it done. Um, approaching those conversations is really important because if you go into it with a blaming tone um, <laughs> and you're saying, you know, my job's as important as yours and you should be doing this to yeah. help me and, you know, all that kind of stuff, it, it'll end badly because that's what happens. Yeah, you haven't done um, the dishwasher. That's what I've been saying a lot. Yeah. Can you put your washing up off the floor, please? Um, so, yeah, so, it, you know, this is family life. This is the problem. We're trying to manage family life in for our work environment as well, and normally we wouldn't be in that position. So approach the conversation in a logical, balanced way um, and actually kind of look at what have you both got to achieve in the week. How are you going to manage the children? We've been advised not to give them to grandparents, which most people, me included, you know, we have a lot of support from grandparents. And over the years, a lot of things I wouldn't have been able to do without that support. So it's acknowledging that actually these circumstances are very different to maybe what we would usually have. But it, it is about picking your time. I would say pick your time when you're both yeah. able to have a conversation and actually be very balanced about what you're trying to say and make and decide not to get drawn into those um that blaming game and you know the kind of punishment because we're all in it together actually and we're all finding it difficult so that's that's really good because i think that um it's it's hard because you're like we were saying your productivity does go down and so i i've always had um this kind of mum guilt i've had a guilt when i've been working on my computer that i've been ignoring my kids and then when i'm playing with my kids i feel guilty that i'm not doing my work and mm. i guess this situation kind of makes that worse because you're all in the same place at the same time and often people you know kids are trying to come in or i'm conscious that i'm trying to make them lunch I don't normally make my kids lunch because they're at school but at the moment I feel like I'm trying to make them lunch because last week they work so hard every day they were I mean I don't know who these who these children are but they were getting up at <laughs> half eight doing a full working day and they were finishing at four o'clock so I felt as a mum that at one o'clock I would have their lunch ready for them but obviously in my normal working day 
I wouldn't be doing that. And things like also tidying their room a little bit more. I don't normally tidy their rooms, just leave them. But I've been tidying them and cleaning them and everything. And yeah, so I, I've, got lo I've got less time to be a mum and less time to be a, wor a, a working person. So do we have to lower our um, expectations? I think um, we, we set ourselves expectations quite regularly that are probably unattainable. And then when we don't meet them, we give ourselves a hard time. Mm. And guilt, I think we were joking about this earlier in our peer support group, that guilt is something that you feel it if you're working and you're not, in, you know, you're not with your children. You feel it if you're with your children and you're not working. If you don't work and you're a stay-at-home mum, um, you feel guilty for other things, you know. Yeah. So it, I think it, this is about making choices that you are you doing the are you doing the best you can do in the circumstances? Are you being realistic with what you're setting yourself to achieve? Can the children help? You know, if they're of an age where they can help, my children have, have cooked things for tea today. Um, you know, there are, this is about the education as well. There are other life skills that they can be learning. Mm, like the and, dishwasher. Yeah, the dishwasher, <laughs> the um, boiling a ham, which my middle daughter did today. Wow. <laughs> and my my son made the you know the uh, chips that we had for tea. You know, it's been it just break down some of the jobs, give them some responsibility. Um, you are you are having to do other things, and it's okay to say that. And it is hard, you know, as a working mum myself. I work you know my own business and work a lot of hours, but I always. The, the bit with it is about trying to be wherever you are. So if you're with your children, be with your children. Yeah. Focus on what they need and be in that here and now. And if you're working, be in the here and now with that. Because otherwise, you're distracted wherever you are. And not giving 100% to either. No. Okay. And so you've got some more... Um, if anybody has any questions, I'm, I'm basically using this as my own therapy here. So <laughs> if anybody has any questions, please... Uh, I'm hoping... Oh, hang on. Oh, we have. I haven't scrolled down. Oh, okay, hang on. So you were going to share... Well, shall I, let, let me have a look at some of the questions. Okay. Um, so Natalie on Facebook has said, I went out for food today and it actually felt really eerie. Me and the kids just wanted to get home as soon as possible. So I guess that's the wanting to retreat thing yes saying, but... and also you everything feels different out there um people are giving each other distance it is quite quiet in most places i know we've got these stories on social media about people kind of gathering in places but in general terms it's very quiet out there so things are strange uh, and, and wanting to get home to your safe place i think we're kind of being told stay home because you're safe at home yeah. uh, so that yeah. kind of feeds into your subconscious, I think. I mean, I went, we've been walking the dog um, once a day, and whilst I know I need to get out of the house and have some fresh air, I've been doing gym and stuff at home, but it's not the same as getting out and having a walk. I feel like my um, anxiety levels go through the roof, especially when we were walking to the park, park and it, the path was quite narrow, and there was a gate, you know, one of those kissing gates that you have to get through at the top. So I'd feel my anxiety levels really, really rising. Um, so... And when I got back home and I shut the door, I was like, phew. Mm. So let's have a look some more. Um, so Karen's saying, finding screen time an issue. He is on the PC for his learning sent from school, then wants to game afterwards. I'm telling him to have breaks, which causes issues, but feel he's on it too much. But it's the only time he talks to his friends. It's hard to find the balance. Yeah, so what about, what would you say about that, about screen time? I think it's really tricky because it, it's true that it's the only time it, we're all doing it i'm on them all the yeah. time at the moment uh, not and i would never normally be um it, it's about for teenagers especially i think it's being realistic you know that actually that is their way of contacting their friends it is about engagement and it yes they're probably playing games but there are they are also interacting and at the minute they can't they can't interact um, and it's just like us we we miss our friends we miss our family we miss that social interaction and that fun element as well um i think you're right to kind of put in about breaks and things but if you're trying to put a break in halfway through a game then there's going to be tension yeah, be conflict, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so i for me i would say um put other things in place try and eat together as a family yeah. um you know try and put in other kinds of conversations put in a boundary around time, but let them know in advance so that you're going to put that boundary in. So it isn't a case of you've been on that all day, let's take you off it. Because it's just like, you might as well light the blue touch paper and watch the firework go. Yeah. It's like, there is a lack of control for everybody at the moment. And if, as soon as you take that control away from somebody in their own home, 
and I know these things cause problems, you know, in general living yeah. anyway, um, it, it just adds to that feeling of being out of control. And I guess we worry about our kids being on the screen the whole time. But at the moment, like you say, if, if, they're, if they're gaming like on something like, I don't know, is it Minecraft when they're playing with their friends? Like you say, they might not want to do something that we're doing now, which is talking because like they don't re interact like this, do they? they? They interact through playing through games. So I guess that we're living in really weird times and maybe to be a bit more flexible. But if you're worried about them being glued to the screen the whole time, then what you've just suggested is really good. But I guess yeah. avoiding conflict is the most important thing yeah i mean we, there's going to be some conflict because we're going to get agitated with each other um but you have a choice has how far you go with that walking away from situations picking your battles mm. um you know being realistic about how much of this you can actually kind of i don't know parent i suppose you know as long as they're safe online as long as they're not on it 24 hours a day you know you're asking them maybe ask them to charge it somewhere different and i know that, that causes issues because i've got three children with three phones and you know have to manage that every day um but i think we are in extraordinary times and if you take away certain amounts of contact that people have with that they're using these mechanisms for i think that will affect them even more okay and we've had another question in from carrie saying um just um, Asda and Sainsbury's were scary. It was awkward when my 10 year old son asked, why is that man wearing a gas mask? So what is the best way? I can't even believe I'm saying this because four or five weeks ago, mm. but what is the best way of explaining to your child that there is a global pandemic and we need to stay away from people? I mean, I can't, yeah. even, I can't even comprehend that in my own head. So how do you say that? To, I mean, my children watch the news, and they're aware of it and they're much older. But if you have um, and, and a 10 year old probably knows a bit about it from watching the news and the school and stuff. But how do you even talk to young children about that? It's about having a conversation in an age appropriate way. The um, I'll give you an example. Um, we've got a family WhatsApp group and um, some of my family members were putting things on that were coming up in social media. And um, not all my children are on the WhatsApp group, only two of them. Uh, and I actually messaged all the adults separately and said, can you stop? Yeah. Because I can't control what you're putting into the... And I know they can access information, yeah. but they're not looking for it. It's about doing things in an age-appropriate way and explaining so that before you get to places, children know already what to expect. Okay. Um, because if they, if they can preempt it, then it's not as shocking. The other thing I would say about that is, especially for younger children, is is to encourage them to play because if they're playing, they are working out for themselves what's happening. And they might we've noticed with some of the client work we're doing online, we're, we're doing um, Zoom sessions with children as young as five years old, which we never thought would work in a million years, but it's working really well. Um, and we're noticing that their play is around, you know, kind of police officers and nurses and hospitals and poorly people and and and, and they're just trying to process what is happening here so how would you okay so how would you do that at home you've got a five-year-old a seven-year-old how do you um i guess we how, how do you start play therapy like that with your kids how, what would you do Get, well the, the thing is it's child-led so children will find their oh, way through okay. with it so they will either if you've got a child who plays and you know quite a few children will just kind of automatically use whatever figures they're using or whatever they whatever they like and um, you might have others who might really like just sitting down and coloring or drawing or you know it's about your individual children you know your children um, and you know how they process how they play how they talk if they are anxious if they're a bit older you know do some baking with them stand by side by side the eye contact can sometimes be a bit uh, a bit too much oh okay um, that's a good tip yeah yeah so do things side by side sit in color um and like we said i know that people have got probably quite a lot that they're managing but it's creating that time together um but also make some of this a little bit fun because yes we're all trying to process a lot of change and a lot of things that are going on but mm. actually you can play games and you can have fun as, a, as an adult as well as your child and they need to, need to see that you can still do that as well if you are anxious what yeah. happens is you kind of don't contain what's happening for your children and they feed off what you think is fear okay. you know fearful so let's let's talk about that a bit more then so i so if you are really really struggling 
and um, I mean I'm sure you know my my kids have seen me when I was at a, a low moment I, I I had a bit of a, a sob but I, I had a sob in my bedroom on Mother's Day not for my lack of presence because I'm used to that but <laughs> I don't know Sunday was a ba Sun Mother's Day was a bad day but um, I haven't I didn't cry well I, I think I did actually cry in front of my son once and I think he just thought I was a bit odd so if you are really struggling to, well, I don't know, maybe you don't, maybe you're not supposed to contain it. I don't know. Do you contain it? What do you do? What do you do if you're really not coping at all? I think it doesn't hurt children to necessar necessarily see that you've, you're upset. Okay. Um, you know, because if you're never upset, how do they know how to, how to do that stuff? We learn from the people around us. So it's about being reasonable, really. If you're crying all the time, yeah. then you need to get some support because your children will try and look after you. Yeah. Not so, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, well, it's okay sometimes because, you know, we need it. But yeah. um, I know when my children have seen me upset over the years, you know, it's, it, I get to a point where I'm like, actually, this is what I need to do. And it's coming out. <laughs> yeah. um, and, um, and it does feel a bit disconcerting for them because they're used to seeing you being able to manage stuff but yeah. at the same time you're human and you you know you do need an outlet sometimes so again being reasonable with it that if you are if you know as an adult that you are struggling then you need to talk to somebody whether that's a friend whether that's accessing therapy um whether it's using one of the phone lines that are out there and just access some support from somebody if you um are momentarily having a dip which i think we all have done and will do and continue to do um you know that's natural that's a natural response and they will have those dips too they will express them possibly in a different way so whereas we might get upset or we might get angry they might become isolated or they might they might have an outburst or you know whatever it, it depends on the person and wh where they're at but um if you can be in a place where you can help them to make sense of that then that makes life easier for you now you were saying about um getting help so if you if you don't want to speak to a friend or you can't speak to a friend um you've got some resources have you got some resources on your website yes and are you yeah, so, go on no so we've set up um a hub uh, i think we've imaginatively called it the corona hub i think um people need to but know where it is <laughs> if you go to um, Fortis Therapy website, <coughs> excuse me, if you go to Fortis Therapy and Training website on the home page, there's a link that you can go through. And what we've done is um, we've, we're putting out stuff every day. So there's some blog articles on there. There's some things you can work through. So we put one out, I think it was a couple of days ago about um, what masks we wear. So what are we showing on the outside and what are we keeping hidden on the inside, which is what we use in therapy. We, we literally use papier-mâché masks. Um, and we used a whole, we created a whole display with them that people sent in to us, which was amazing last year. But we've basically done a bit of a worksheet so you can literally, and as a family, you could sit down and do that together. You know, you could, okay, so how's everybody feeling? Um, mm. There's two, there's several things on there that, that people can do. Um, another good way of being able to figure out where you are at is to scale how you're feeling. Oh, so, I remember you sharing this on, um, with Michelle on Small Business Saturday yeah. the other day. Yeah, I, I thought yeah. that was good, yeah. Yeah, so if you're a 10, a 10 would be the best you've ever felt. And so it's very subjective. It's very much about you. If 10 is the best you've ever felt, zero or one is the worst you've ever felt. Um, and just track where you're at. So say, for example, you wake up in the morning and you're feeling like a five. What do I need to do to help myself to get to a six? Do I need to talk to somebody? Do I need to do something reflective and really think about what's going on? Do I need to do some exercise, get some endorphins going? Do I need to plan what I'm eating today? Whatever, whatever it is. But you'll probably see that as the day goes on, your mood gets better. Yeah, I was just going to say that. I always feel, well, even without this, I always feel pretty rubbish in the morning. Um, and that's why I norm I exercise a lot and I always exercise in the morning and I always feel better afterwards. But um, especially now when I wake up and it's that, that those few split seconds of waking up and remembering what, what's going on. Um, but yeah, by the end of the day, by the end of the day, so I might be like a three or a four when I wake up, but then towards the end of the day, I might be a seven or an eight. So yeah. it's, I guess, is it check, about checking in at different times of the day, not just... Yeah, check yeah. it in with yourself at different points of the day. See how you're doing. So if you've moved from a three to a seven or an eight, that's a great, that's a 
that's great because you've obviously done things throughout the day that helped you to feel better you know our mood has a mind of its own sometimes our hormones as well get in yeah. the way of all of that yeah. uh, <laughs> good old hormones yeah um so you you can feel it i i felt it yesterday i could feel it feel things lifting uh, as the day went on as i knew we got a plan in place for things so um you know what what works for you will be different to everybody else so exercise is a great thing if you are trying to figure something out or you can feel there's a real weight on you then do some journaling you know write it down it doesn't have to be in any kind of sense or make sense or spell correctly or any of that just mind map it list it write something start with an empty sheet just start writing and let it come out of your head um if you feel that you haven't got anyone you can trust that's a really good way of being able to process things so put things in that you know help you so it might be doing something creative it might be cooking it might be going out for a walk um but it's you have a, you have things you can do to help lift your mood and it may only lift it for a couple of hours but at least you've not been in that place for very long um also i noticed um i was i follow you on instagram and i thought you um some of your instagram posts are really really good and it's just one little thing i think you're sharing well, i don't know if it's once a day but um they really made i like i don't know if you can remember any of the ones you shared recently but i just thought that that's quite if you if you're struggling then maybe just even go and have a look at one of your instagram posts because you can they're really easy to follow there's like a simple diagram and it just kind of shows you what, yeah what to do. It, we've tried to do it in a way that we, you can kind of see it instantly so we've we developed um last week 20 tips to look after yourself um and um we're putting out one out a day but we've got the whole document if people want it i'm happy to send it out to people if they'd like it and we're doing another one this week um which we'll be putting out around working from home because i think there's other things coming to the fore now that are starting to impact yeah. on people so how would they, how um, would they, they get that from you would they email email you through the website or okay yeah they can email through the website or they can drop me a message on my facebook okay. um on fortis or on my facebook alexis powell howard i'm happy to i'll happily um, send information out um but the, the tips we're putting out are things like um, managing how you're thinking. So if your head goes into that catastrophe, a bit like you were saying about the gates, you know, if you're walking down a pathway yeah. and there's a gate at the end, in your mind, your fear may be that someone's going to walk around that corner and I can't get the distance. Yeah. Or it could be I've got to touch that gate. Mm. All the things we're being told to, you know, are potentially risky. So in your head, it's about balancing that conversation out. So uh, because it ultimately... Where we're going in our heads is that we're going to get ill and we're going to die. That's actually our fear. Mm. Um, so how can you balance out your thinking? So instead of catastrophizing and making it the worst case scenario, putting some balanced thoughts in there about, well, you know, we can step back. We can take time to let somebody come past us. We can, you know, <clears throat> use our coat to open the gate, whatever, so that you're starting to kind of bring your anxiety levels down. A lot of what is going on is what's happening on our heads. For me, I think um, that my anxiety about going towards the gate is that I can't manage my husband. So I'm trying to pull him back and I'm trying to say, put the dog on the lead. And because he's saying, no, he's still obviously observing the social distancing, but he doesn't have anxiety like I do. So he, we're not on the same wavelength. So I find that quite difficult. Right, we've got quite a few more comments. So let's have a look. Ben Anderson, thank you for sharing this broadcast on um, Instagram, Ben, I know you've got a lot of followers. Balance has to be the key in this. We've never experienced anything um, like this, so I don't think we should be beating ourselves up. I think that's about the screen time. Um, then Karen said, um, we do always eat together and we have rules, but he still tries to push the boundaries, but then that's teenagers. Yeah, oh, I've lost you again on, um, I've lost you again on, I'm gonna add you again on Instagram. Yeah, I guess that's teenagers. It's just gonna be worse now. Um, so Natalie said, do you have any advice on how to manage my own anxieties and worries? So hopefully um, Alexis <coughs> is, oh, by the way, someone asked on Instagram, who am I talking to? Um, this <laughs> is Alexis um, and she is from um, Fortis Therapy and Training. She um, owns an award winning business and she is a psychotherapist and um, basically all joining in on my psychotherapy session. <laughs> This is my the small this, print. this is my trick. <laughs> this is my trick to get a free session. Um, so yeah, Natalie, we'll um, we'll ask Alexis to share some more tips in a moment. Um, 
Jade has said, okay, my daughter is five tomorrow and I'm worried about her not seeing her friends and family over a long period of time. I don't think she really understands. Good. Her anxiety is really high where she is saying her clothes are hurting her and she doesn't want to get dressed in the mornings. Have you got any tips for Jade, Alexis? Yes. So um, I would say if for a five-year-old's birthday, it's about kind of people, isn't it? Um, and I would definitely look at um, using an app you know, like house party or whatever, just to get people together. So, because you can play games on it and things as well. So, that interactive stuff. Even if, um, you know, my five-year-old niece was drawing badly <laughs> last night in a, in, a, in a game we were playing, and um, it was just fun. So, anything like that. So that's, um, that's in house party, yeah. House party, okay. yeah. Um, the thing in terms of your managing your own anxiety, if you imagine, if I if I just explain what happens when you're anxious in a way that's quite creative, is that okay with everybody? Because yeah, yeah. I think that might be helpful. Um, oh, are you getting a pen and okay. paper out? No. Oh. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So if you, this is Jack Jack, isn't it, from The Incredibles? Anyone who's got children, like probably a similar age to mine, has probably seen it about twenty times. Yeah. So if you imagine that you have a part of your brain called the amygdala, okay? Mm -hmm. And the amygdala is the part of your brain that gives you those responses. So fight, flight, freeze, and okay. flop. If you imagine that Jack-Jack is your amygdala, okay? So he jumps in to save the day. That's what the amygdala does. It, it checks out what's going on. Why are, we, why are we under threat here? And then it steps in. Um, now, ordinarily, that's great because it keeps us safe. But when we're under pressure at the moment, like we are at the moment, he's not sure whether we're really under threat or not, because we're not sure. So he jumps in and becomes a jumpy superhero. He's jumping in even though you don't need him. Problem is that when he's jumping in to help you, you can't access the front of your brain, which is that rational, logical part, your prefrontal cortex. And you also can't access the back of your brain, which is your hippocampus. And the, the hippocampus is the bit where you've got all your experiences. It's a bit like having a librarian who pulls out your experiences and goes, oh, we've been here before, we know what to do, let's do this. Mm. Um, because you can't access it because he's feeling agitated. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 it does. Be yeah, so, because you know you're not being rational, but you can't mm. stop being irrational. No, and he's, your amygdala is kind of saying, well, you're under threat, so I need to jump in. So you feel anxious um, uh, already, so your levels are already high, and then something happens and it tips you over and you can't rationalise because you can't access those parts of the brain any more than children can. So when children are feeling agitated um, and they're upset or they're angry and you're trying to get them to tell you why and they can't tell you, it's because they, they don't know, mm. they can't access that part of the brain. So if you imagine your superhero, it doesn't have to be Jack Jack. It's just just small, <laughs> um, <Yeah>. but <laughs> fits in my bag. Yeah. Um, but you can use this with children. You know, this is what's happening. This guy's trying to save the day, but he doesn't need to at the minute. Now, one way of calming this part of your brain down is to breathe properly, um, which sounds like a properly counsellory psychotherapist thing to say. But if you're not breathing properly, you're not getting enough oxygen in, which mm. means that your brain isn't calming down and your muscles aren't calming down. I'm not breathing properly. <laughs> All day we're breathing up yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need to breathe into your ribcage so you fill up the whole of your diaphragm. So your tummy comes out so it looks like you've had a big meal. Okay. Okay. So if you breathe in for the count of seven, all the way in, so you full and then you breathe out slowly so your out breath is longer than your in breath okay so if you can get to if you think 7-11 you know those stores 7-11 yeah. so if you breathe in for seven all the way in and then you breathe out for 11 if your out breath is longer than your in breath it's triggering your what's called your parasympathetic nervous system which slows everything right down uh, okay so you start to think properly, you start to think clearly. If you've got children, um, if you do this with them laid on the floor and put a book on their belly, they'll see the book moving because you want okay. the book to move up and down. Um, so you can learn these things together. And you, if you practice them, when you are feeling really stressed or there's something happening that feels, you know, another layer of stuff you've got to deal with, it's just a mechanism that you can use. You can use it anywhere. So I, um, I haven't done it every day, but I've started, I did try a long time ago to do um, meditation, which like you were saying about the, um, the breathing is a very counselling thing to say. I always used to think that um, meditation, you had to be like, I don't know, a vegan or something. No disrespect, <laughs> no disrespect to vegans or, or hippies, you know, but 
Um, I started, I downloaded the Calm app and um, I found that really, really useful. I, I know to, to get benefit from it, you need to try and do it every day and I haven't done it every day, but when I was in not a good place the week before last, it was really, really good. And I guess there are such similar apps for children as well. So, yeah. um, okay, let's read some more comments. Um, oh, just quickly going back, why is this little girl saying her um, clothes are hurting her when she's getting dressed in the mornings? Um, that, that could be that she's um, sensitive, her skin's become quite sensitive. Um, so, you know, it, it could be linked to that. Uh, it's difficult to know if there's anything else going on. But um, I know when I've had children before where clothing being too tight or, um, you know, even having the seams in the wrong place, that kind of thing. Again, it can be feeling a bit about control. Yes. Um, My daughter yeah. had that when she was four and I used to take her to school every morning. She'd sit on the stairs and I'd have to do her tights. And every morning we, I, it took me 20 minutes to sort out the twisties on her tights. You know, the mm. little seam where the toes are. Yeah. So yeah. what 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 that is it that that's it can be it can be a sensory thing it can be irritating it can be agitating and if you're already feeling agitated those things just kind of really you focus in on them especially when you're little um, because you know it's it's something that you want to get control over and it's lots of other things you probably don't have control yeah. over so it's um, it is worth listening to children when they're saying those things you know just wearing looser clothing and um, I'm not saying enabling a lot of those behaviours because some of it will it can become almost obsessive. Um, but yeah. it is about just being, just listening, really listen to what they're saying and just accommodate as okay. much as you can. Okay, that's really useful. Thank you. Um, Karen said, really helpful. Thank you. Um, actually, we should all wish um, Jade, your daughter, a happy birthday <laughs> for tomorrow. And I'm Absolutely. sure you're going to give her the best day ever. So please um, don't try not to worry too much. Um, Carrie said, my daughter is five too and she FaceTimes with her friends. And that's helped her. Maybe she's also written cards to her friends. And um, Carrie has, exp has explained to her, oh, she's, oh, she, oh, bless her. So Carrie's the one who's, no, Carrie said, I've explained to her that everyone's feeling a bit poorly at the moment, so she can't go on play dates, and she's accepted this. Yeah, and that's the thing. Children do do generally accept what you tell them when you say things like that. There are some. Um, I'll find the resources. I'll put them on our Facebook and Instagram. About there's a really good. Um, there's a book that's come out that's about talking to children about COVID, and I'll see if I can find the link and oh, put it out yeah. so that people can see it. Just seeing if there's any comments on. There's lots of people. I can see lots of people have logged in to face onto Instagram, but no questions so if anybody else has got any more questions do let us know um would you like to share one more tip before we say goodbye and then if then if there's yeah. another question come in that we we can we 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 you can answer <laughs> <laughs> Um, one of the things that one of our therapists said today, um, which we, we use this in schools, actually, um, and it is about creating a space. So in schools, um, we work in a lot of schools and we create spaces for children. So um, a bit of a sensory space, you know, something that feels safe and it's um, maybe got some kind of uh, tenting over the top and some fairy lights and that kind of oh. thing. So children can. Now, one of the things that one of my therapists said today was about um, having a quiet area at home uh, especially for younger children and for parents so if someone goes into that area then they just want some time on their own so having some cushions on the floor maybe some just making it into a nice space uh, even if it's a, a corner of a room or somewhere that feels you know kind of enclosed um, it means that you've got somewhere that everybody knows if someone's in that space they need to be <laughs> <clears throat> and they are taking some time out. Um, it creates um, the opportunity for conversation if you want to, but it also space for mindfulness and, you know, all of these things that we know help us. Like you were saying about meditation, Fran, if it, that things like that can be really helpful. If you don't do it every day, don't beat yourself up about yeah. it. Doing something is better than doing nothing. Yeah. So just being reasonable with yourselves, accepting where we are. Um, and I think um, recognising that, it's important for adults to play as well as it is for children. So, you know, if you can build a Lego thing, whatever it might be together, or if you can sit and have a chat or you can do something together, then then and, and do that. Because actually, we're, although this time is probably quite stressful for people, hopefully we won't be in a position again where we've got this time, you know, where everyone's at home together. So, you know, 
try not to kind of see all of it as a burden some of it is going to be really okay. is really good as well and what i would say is don't play monopoly though um, no don't do that <laughs> we played monopoly and um yeah it didn't go too well i think it no. made anxiety worse um although i mean it was there were some fun moments but there was a lot of ganging up on people and mostly me and then my husband and yeah so that i'll tell you what's a really good game actually if you can guess it uh, it's a card game called avocado smash okay. have you seen that no um it's really good fun for any age and uh it gets it gets a bit competitive but it's it's a really good fun game and my middle daughter asked to get not monopoly out yesterday i just said no Did you? <laughs> it's not happening Really? Yeah, we're oh, not doing right. Monopoly. Well, Alexis, I'll play something else. <laughs> if you say that, then I know. I knew it was a bad idea. I knew. I, I put yeah, that on one of our happening. Instagram posts about not not playing Monopoly, and it got a lot of likes. So um, it was interesting what you said about the the um, the building that like having the den or the teepee as well. Because like, I remember being a kid, loving play, loving making dens. I know, like as a parent, you don't want that to happen because it makes your house an utter mess. But there's something really quite nice about being in a small space, isn't there? So I yeah, I well, you, we we've been talking about as wanting to get back to houses. You know, like you you go out and you feel like you're venturing yeah. into something, and then, well, for children it's the same thing. Um, you know, if you have blankets over your table and they're hiding underneath or they've managed to my kids used to do it across sofas you know where you'd yeah you'd walk in and every throw you've ever owned somehow they've found it and and it's all in there yeah. um but it's it's quiet time and it's it's all sensory it makes it smaller it's more manageable and you know you can you can get involved in that as well it doesn't have just have to be there for the children well I think you've been absolutely brilliant Alexis oh, thank, thank you. you so much I'm I've got, let's see, I've got a couple of, come a couple of, oh my gosh, now everyone's coming in. Uh, Natalie said, slightly off topic, but I have a three-year-old son and just with you mentioning about clothing exactly the same and takes a long time to get him ready. It takes about 15 minutes to calm down. He will bite his fingers, pull his hair. Do you have any advice on how to manage him? Uh I wouldn't be, um, it could be anxiety related, it could be spectrum related, it could be dyspraxia, it could be all sorts of things. So it's too young at the moment to be able to look into that, but just keep a monitor of it and just see. The other thing I would say is that you um, recognise what might be his triggers. So is it that he's not in control? Is it that he's not able to make choices? Um, is it a sensory thing of things not feeling great? Just really kind of, instead of being in it with him, kind of try and step back and observe and see what you're, see what's happening. Okay. Um, and reassurance and listening and all of those kinds of skills, really. And at what point and, and, where, and who do you go to when, like, are you been monitoring it for a while, it's still the same? Is there a time when you think, right, I need to go and get help? Do you go and speak to your GP first of all? Yeah, your GP um, would be the person that you'd go to in the first instance, okay. um, and then he would—he's kind of like the, the the signpost or the gate, the gatekeeper, if you like—and okay. um, would probably refer if if there were concerns and refer you um, further into um, paediatricians and things like that. But um, I would say that you know just keep an eye on what's happening it's it's one of those things from a sensory point of view that children can start to learn to accommodate as they get older yeah. um you know because they learn other mechanisms and other ways of doing things um and also they do things for themselves so they do it in a way that feels yeah. comfortable for them I mean, so i thought those twisty things were going to go on forever and it felt like it was going on forever and obviously now my daughter's 14 i don't help her with her tights but at the time no. i did feel like it was going on forever and it was but always on the way to and always on the way to school and it was oh, yeah, so annoying so i had to build extra time into my day to do it so that i wasn't under more under more pressure so i hope that's i hope that's helped you a little bit with your boy um alexis thank you so much you've been absolutely fantastic your your tips you're so calming mm, and you <laughs> that was alexa <laughs> oh you see i told you that's what happens all the time <laughs> well i'm not going to say your name but thank you so much for doing thanks this. for having me i've loved I it i know you're so so busy and we really appreciate you um sharing all your resources on your website all your instagram posts doing this live broadcast i'm going to share this everywhere um we're very grateful and so people can find resources on your website first of all yep. 
Yes, Brilliant. and if there's anything that they want to know specifically, then just drop me a message or, you know, um, I'll get back to you eventually. It might take me a couple of days, That's but I will get back to you. Well, thank you very, very much. Um, and okay. thank you to everyone who's joined us and asked questions. Um, I'm very grateful. And next time I see you, when I see you, um, I owe you a very large glass of wine. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> take care, everybody. Thank right. you. Bye. Uh, bye. bye.